Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFI. Let's see. Cloud Casa has announced the launch of Cloud Casa for Velero, a new offering to manage and run backups at enterprise scale. To discuss this launch and see it in action, we have two guests from Cloud Casa by Catalogic, Sonan Shende, Senior Director of Engineering, and Sebastian Glaub, Cloud Architect. Sonan, Sebastian, it's great to have you both on the show. Hi, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Talk a bit about what is Cloud Casa for Velero and what specific problem you folks are trying to solve for customers? Okay, so uh, Cloud Casa for Velero allows Velero users to manage their cluster using our software as a service platform. By plugging directly into Velero, Cloud Casa provides user friendly, intuitive UI for Kubernetes cluster management utilizing Velero as the backup tool. That means that uh, Velero users are no longer required to use Cloud Casa agent for backups and restore as they can still continue to use Valero while benefiting from, from our solution. So what are the benefits, right? First of all, users get a multi-cluster and multi-cloud management in one place. They don't have to jump across different environments, access different clusters to see what's going on. They can simply go to Cloud Casa and manage everything from there. They also get a real-time job monitoring. So whenever they run a backup or a restore, they will see it right away in our UI. They can click on the backup job and see live progress there. Um, the UI itself is, is user-friendly. It's very intuitive. When you define a backup, you just go step-by-step. Step. Same with a restore. Uh, we also allow users, Valero users, to do advanced cloud recovery. So we can take a Valero backup and restore it to cloud, creating a cluster, installing Valero, setting up everything, and basically in a couple of minutes, giving user a fully working environment. Uh, also, Valero users get better compliance and governance with failure alerting and reporting. So we design an alerting system, like whenever a backup or a restore fails, there is a broken connection. Uh, we'll create an alert in our UI, but also user can specify email alert. So whenever something goes wrong, backup goes wrong, they will get an email so they can troubleshoot. And that leads to my last but not least benefit, which is faster troubleshooting because of a central log collection system. So whenever user adds a cluster to Cloud Casa, he will see all his backup jobs, uh, all restores. They can simply click on a backup or restore job. It will be download log option and they can download a CSV file so they don't have to access the storage or access the cluster to get the logs. They can simply get it from the UI. And, and the best part of the, all these benefits, this, this feature itself is that Valero users can get all these benefits without worrying about infrastructure management, without causing any disruptions, or without having to undergo any migration process. Um, so yeah, these this are the key benefits, in my opinion. Excellent. Thanks for talking about that. Now it's time for uh, us to see some action there. So then, uh, please, you know, go ahead and show us, you know, the multi-cluster manager for Valero. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, very excited to show uh, this new feature where Cloud Casa uh, is, is, is now going to work with existing Valero deployments. The interface hasn't changed much in terms of registering a cluster. Um, with Cloud Casa. Um, so uh, if you have a Kubernetes cluster, it, it, it's, it's running uh, Velero deployments at present. It's very simple to add such a cluster to uh, Cloud Casa. You just go to configuration, uh, clusters. Um, I have already added one of the clusters um, that I have. Uh, it's already registered over here. Uh, but registering a new one is, is, is equally simple. You just give it some name. Um, if you want Cloud Casa to manage Valero deployment uh, on this particular cluster, you, you select this option, else you just leave it as it is, and then you just register. It is as simple as that. Uh, you do get a, a command which you have to execute on the uh, uh, client cluster, the Kubernetes cluster. And that's it. Uh, it will be registered just as any other cluster. So folks who have been using Cloud Casa so far, uh, registering a cluster which has a Valero deployment is, is virtually no different than what you were earlier uh, doing. Uh, so once that is done, um, uh, you will uh, see your cluster go into active state. Uh, and there is a bunch of information that you can see about your cluster. Um, but before that, if I go to the clusters page, uh, 
you can see that there are two clusters. If I if I um, uh, install the agent, you'll see a lot of information about it. But even through this page, if 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 you if you just have a look at this page, you are already been told what is the version of Valero that is running, what is the Kubernetes version, um, and if you just happen to click one of these clusters, you will be given some more information. Uh, you will be told uh, what namespace your Valero is running in. Um, and uh, what are the various backups that you have run using your Valero deployment, uh, a list of restores, a list of recovery points. Uh, now, um, if you look at the concept uh, in Valero, you, can, um, you will have to define a backup custom resource in order to run a backup. Uh, but Cloud Casa has, has, has uh, tried to simplify it a little bit. Uh, if you define a backup, uh, Cloudcaster clearly thinks that you're trying to define the scope of the backup. So it needs to be called out as a backup definition. Now you can take that backup definition and you can run uh, a backup based on this definition n number of times. Even though Valero doesn't allow it, uh, Cloudcaster is intelligent enough to interpret your uh, runs of the same backup. Uh, so what you see here is a simple list of all the backup definitions that you have. But you can also see uh, a list of all recovery points, which means if, 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 if you would have run 10 uh, backups, uh, you, would, you would see those 10 recovery points listed over here. Um, uh, a short summary of uh, the backup. So in this uh, example, you can see that this uh, backup ran, the backup was successful, uh, the start times and end times. What's most important is the settings feature. You don't have to go to every uh, Valero deployment and, and try to figure out how your Valero server is configured. You, you can clearly see what are the features that have been enabled for that particular Valero deployment. You can see a list of environment variables. The most important thing, you can see all the Valero plugins that are uh, currently deployed on the server along with the versions. So generally what, what might happen is, uh, assume you have 10 uh, Kubernetes clusters. Um, you, could, you could very easily uh, through this particular uh, mechanism see which of those clusters is, is running Valero 1.8, 1.10. Uh, you can clearly have a look at which of these clusters are running older versions of Valero plugins, so on and so forth. So um, essentially, uh, the bottom line of this entire feature is, if you have 15 clusters, you will be able to have a clear view of how they are configured uh, to run uh, through a single pane of glass. Uh, and then, of course, you could, you could delve further into each one of them um, and uh, look at what is the configuration of those clusters. What's amazing is that you also get a bunch of metrics. Like for example, in, in, in this particular case, uh, it is clearly telling me that whatever snapshots that I have, uh, uh, sorry, whatever volumes that I have that are being used, they are entirely protected using snapshots. So my snapshot coverage is 100%. Um, so this is where the value addition happens uh, if, you, if you use Cloud Casa. This will clearly tell you if you have missed any persistent volumes uh, in the scope of your backup definition so that you can you can inc include those and make sure that uh, you are protecting those volumes. Um, so yeah, so this, uh, this uh, entire demonstration talks about how you can uh, manage multiple clusters which are running Valero. Um, by the way, if you are a Cloud Casa user, you will, you will see your uh, normal Cloud Casa clusters uh, displayed over here, listed over here as well. It, it just won't have the Valero logo beside it. Um, so again, overall, a single pane of glass, you can manage your Valero clusters, you can manage clusters that have been uh, protected using Cloud Casa uh, seamlessly. Thank you. Now I think it's time to see the demo for creating new backups and restore for custom resources in Valero through a user interface. Notice the simplicity with which I can, I can, I can create a cube backup, okay? So I, I'll, just, I'll just go to define backup, um, I'll select the namespaces. Um, I have a namespace. Um, so you can see that all the namespaces on my cluster, they're actually listed here automatically. This is a discovery which runs behind the scene. Um, 
So I, I, I select the namespace which I want to protect. Uh, there are a bunch of other configurations which, which, which can be used uh, to further uh, refine the scope of the backup. Uh, I can either choose to take a snapshot of the persistent volumes or or, or just leave it as it is. Um, do I include all the cluster scoped resources? Yes, no, uh, I'll just leave it to auto. Um, whatever backup storage locations I have automatically get listed over here. Backup storage locations in Valero are nothing but uh, targets where your uh, backup needs to be deposited. So right now I have the default version, uh, the default BSL that I have. I just click next. If I have to define any hooks, I'll be I'll be able to define uh, hooks if I if I need them. And just give it a simple name. Um, test simple backup for demo. Um, right, and um, I simply click create and run. Uh, you see that uh, uh, backup has already started. Uh, I can click on this particular job that is running. It gives me a lot of information about my backup. Uh, the activity log tells me how is my backup progressing. Uh, the PV details page will tell me, give me information about all the persistent volumes which are being snapshotted. Uh, wow, so my backup actually finished. And if I if I have to go uh, to my uh, cluster, I can verify that this backup has actually happened. Um, so uh, you can see this uh, backup CR which has been created. Test simple backup for demo. Um, now I can get more information about it uh, by trying to describe the CR. The various things that are there in the status, it's, show, it's, it's showing me that it's completed, so on and so forth. But isn't this a much a much better way of visualizing your your backup jobs? Uh, the story doesn't end here. Uh, if if something goes wrong, okay. Uh, by the way, look at the activity log. The amount of information that that is automatically being populated from the backup. It it tells you the number of resources that have been backed up the number of namespaces that have been protected, the number of CSI PVs that have been protected. Um, it, it, it tells you the volume which has been snapshotted. It also tells you whether the snapshot is really complete or it's, 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 it's in an incompleted form, so on and so forth. Um, and the best part, I mean, all of us um, use this feature the most. Um, if, if, if something has gone wrong and I want to see what's gone wrong, it's a single click where you can simply download the logs of this particular job. It gets downloaded as a CSV file and uh, you can simply filter the logs. Um, uh, log messages, you don't have to execute any other command. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this, this makes debugging triaging so, so very simple. Um, so this uh, concludes the demo of defining a particular backup. Um, we can quickly um, uh, uh, go to the restores. I mean, defining a restore is 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 no different, right? You can you can just uh, select the the restore. Um, you can you'll have to select the recovery point which needs to be used. Um, you can. Uh, Avail the various other configuration options. Select namespace. Okay, this namespace was there in my recovery point. Uh, I will leave the um, uh, rest of the options to default. Uh, by the way, you can restore also to another cluster and that, that's going to be covered by Sebastian uh, after this. Uh, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to restore it to the same cluster from which I had taken the backup. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and rename the namespace. So it, the, the earlier namespace was test CSI snapshot. Let me rename the contents uh, of uh, this particular uh, uh, namespace to demo restore. Um, again, if you want to preserve node ports, so there are a bunch of other pieces of configuration which you can leverage. Uh, just give it a name. And 
that's it. Your your restore should start. Excellent, thanks. Now it's time uh, for us to see easy button for ad hoc backup runs in Valero. Right. So um, if you see uh, uh, that for this particular cluster, we had we had earlier defined uh, uh, a simple backup, right? Uh, this one. Now, uh, if I have to run this backup again, it is it is as simple as uh, going to the actions and and just clicking run now. Um, you just run it and your job should start. All right, so uh, your job has started. Uh, the backup is, is, is progressing. Uh, again, uh, if, if you had to do this through Velero, you would have to create a new backup CR. Uh, you would have to specify uh, uh, the scope of the backup again. Uh, but all of that has been simplified. Uh, you're using Cloud Casa. Um, as uh, Swapnil already said, uh, it's, it's just about, about uh, clicking, about choosing the backup and, and just deciding to run it now. Um, yeah, uh, so that, that concludes the demonstration of, of uh, the Run Now option as well. Sebastian, Swanan, thank you so much for taking time out today and show these demos to us. And as usual, I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Swapnil.